Let's say you have an ETL pipeline in your data factory with data flows, and you'd like to be able to dynamically set the compute size that's used by each of those data flows at runtime. It's fairly easy and pretty straightforward to be able to change the compute type and size of your data flows at design time. So uh, have a look here at my design surface of an ETL pipeline example that I have. I'm clicking here on this load from staging mapping data flow. And here under settings, I can easily set either an Azure integration runtime. Right now I'm just using the default auto resolve integration runtime. And I can set the compute types here. I can set the general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, and the core counts right here in the properties panel. Or if I would like to use a pre-configured integration runtime, I can do that here. I can use one of the Azure integration runtimes that I've set the data flow settings on right here. So if I set, if I pick, for example, my data flow cluster, the options go away because the core counts and the compute types are set within that Azure IR. So if I go to the auto resolve, now I can set them here. So this is useful if I'm doing something like running a pipeline uh, that I run occasionally. So if I run this once a month because it's a, um, a resetting of data or a full instead of an incremental load, I could do something like I could say this is going to be com compute optimized and I need 128 cores for this large load. And then if I'm running this daily, I could say just with a lot of computation, I could say just going to be memory optimized and 16 cores can form a lot of computed columns and aggregation. So I need memory optimized and 16 cores is enough for that smaller amount of data. That's fine. That's great. That is only sets at runtime. I'm sorry, at, at design time. Let's go back now. Let's make it so that we can set this dynamically on each individual run. And the assumption here would be that when you execute your pipeline, you're going to have different sizes of data that are going to be used by your data flows. And uh, those data sizes can vary fairly dramatically. And so you'd like to be able to have your data flows be able to optimize the compute size needed for those uh, different sizes of sources. So what we do here is in this case, in this example, I have, let's start on the left hand side, a get metadata. This will read uh, the file or the folders that are used as sources within this data flow. So this data flow is using a file source. So what I did was with the get metadata, I used the same data set that's being used in that mapping data flow. And I'll show you that um, data set right here. And I'm looking at the movie updates.csv file. So let me show you that file. It's a fairly small file. It's only 104 bytes. Uh, so we'll do some demos with larger files as well. But I'm just showing you here for a small file what we could do with that. So we want to set a small compute environment for a small file like that. Okay, so when that is the size of file, what we can do then in the data flow is we can set dynamic content here on the core count. So you'll see dynamic content come in at the bottom underneath these fields. And this will allow me to use the pipeline designer expression panel. So the expression that I'm using for dynamically setting the core counts for my data flow in this case is if greater than the output of the get metadata activity, the size property is greater than 400 meg, then give me 128 cores. If the get metadata output size is greater than 100 meg, then give me 64 cores. If it's, any, if it's anything less than that, then just give me the eight core um, size. Now you can set these any way you want. The uh, size of the files, the folders, the size of the uh, computes and core counts that you want. You can also set the compute types if you'd like. This is just giving you some direction how to do that. Let me just step one, uh, go one step previous to get metadata. And I did want to show you that the argument I'm using for the field list is size. Down here, so using the size argument out of the get metadata. And that's that's getting passed into the data flow. Now down here, I have another data flow, but this one is not using a file source. This is using a database source. So the way that I'm determining the size of the source in this case is I'm using a lookup. So the lookup is going to use the same data set that is used in the data flow, Azure SQL table one. I'm going to use a query. I'm going to run a query dynamically against that table every time before the data flow runs. So when this pipeline executes, I can first do a select count and find out how many rows are in that source table. So the source table is dbo.loans. Give me the row count for that. And then I can pass in the row count out of the lookup into the mapping data flow and use dynamic content here. The expression is going to be very similar. 
I just kept the uh, the numbers the same in terms of the number of rows I'm looking for. That it was it's the same as the number of bytes that I'm looking for in the file. This is just an example. But in this case, I just say the activity lookup one. I'm getting the output, the first row, and there's my row count one alias of the select counts. So if we have more than 400,000 rows, we will use 120 cores. If we have 100,000, then 64. Anything less will give us eight cores. All right. All right, I think that pretty much sets us up. Let's go ahead and debug this guy and see what we get. I'm going to put a breakpoint right there. These two sets of code will run at the same time. So we can debug and we'll be able to see in real time uh, what we're getting. So the get metadata and the lookup should happen pretty fast and then pass those on into the data flows. And that is done. So the lookup value was... 1,774,758 rows. So that was our row counts. And then the get metadata, we know that should be 104 bytes, right? Yep, there you go. And that means that for the SQL data, data flow, we should get um, a core count of 128. So we got the, um, the right core counts, SQL data, and the DW staging should be the smaller file. So that should give us just eight cores. So everything worked just fine there. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. I don't really need those data flows to do their thing. And instead, let's go into this get metadata and let's see what happens if we have a larger file. So a larger file here in my file system is a loan.csv. So let's point to that file instead. So I'm gonna to go to that, I'm going to go to that data set and I'm going to change my file to the larger file. The loan.csv, this is a larger file. This is 421 meg. All right, very good. So let's go ahead and execute now, and then we will see what we get for a cluster size this time. So this will dynamically change the size of the cluster that we're going to get. So down here under Get Metadata, we should now see the larger file size. So under the Get Metadata, we saw the output is now a much larger file, the 441, 42 megabytes. So how many cores did we get? Oops, how many cores did we get in our DW staging? Data flow, 128 cores. There you go. So that's how you can have dynamic sizing for your data flow cluster compute sizes. Thanks for watching.